Good evening. Welcome to worship in person. We're here. I know we are here and maybe feeling a little anxious and nervous, but we are here nonetheless. Um, thank you for signing up. Thank you for being here and thank you for following along with the terms that we have set in place so that we can all feel safe in this space together. I always start with a few announcements before we begin. Daryl, would you mind turning my mic down just a little bit? I'm feeling a little loud. I'm number, yeah, one. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, so welcome to Monday Thursday, the night that we celebrate and honor the Last Supper of Jesus and his disciples, the night before um, Good Friday, um, where uh, Peter denies and Judas betrays, um, but yet there's also still a genuine washing of feet and last gathering together um, over the meal. Um, just so you are aware of just a few of the logistics, um, I know it's super hard, but we are asking that the congregation does not sing. Um, that's one of the biggest reasons um, that church was so dangerous is because of the aerosols that our pastor was singing. Um, and so we just ask that, I know it's going to be hard, but we're going to allow our singers up here to sing. Um, I'm not going to go around and listen to each and every one of you if you're humming or whatever and tell you to be quiet. But we just ask that you do your best. Um, and enjoying the listening of the music tonight. Um, we have a service tomorrow, which is Good Friday, and that is also at 7 o'clock. There are still spots available online if you want to register and come to that service. And then on Sunday morning for Easter, we have a 645 sunrise service out in our parking lot. Um, so if um, you want to worship out there without having to come inside, that is, and that takes no reservations. Otherwise, we have an 8:30 and a 10:45 service as well. And I know that eight, I know the one of the services filling up. 8:30 is filling up pretty quick, um, but 10:45 I know there are definitely still spots. So if you wanted to sign up for that as well, we have phenomenal ushers that brought you to your seats. They also are going to um, usher you out after the service, starting in the back and making their way forward. We ask, too, that once you are, you leave the sanctuary, um, that you go directly outside. And if you can, just cannot help that you have to talk with someone, then you do that outside um, to just prevent more um, aerosols in the building. Um, communion is still going to take place tonight, but just know that when I say the words, they are sufficient enough. But at the end of the service, once you are leaving, you will be offered a bag of communion to take with you, to take after you leave, whether in your car or at home tonight, so you can still participate in the meal in that way. We also have Holy Week bags on the table that we are encouraging everyone to take. Um, it has a couple of hands-on things that you can do at home during Holy Week, along with some coloring sheets, along with a recipe for resurrection bread, and also the It's the Little Things. Um, for April for our campaign. Those are all the announcements that I have. I just thank everyone who has been a part of getting this place back into a place where we can gather safely and um, so we can gather for this Holy Week for these precious um, events that take place for us to remember. So um, I'll ask you guys just to remain seated for our opening hymn and um, let us continue with worship. <laughs> Oh, 
weary land, my Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. When Jesus was on earth, the flesh was very weak. He took a towel and buried himself, and he washed his disciples' feet. Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land. Oh, Jesus is a rock. In a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. Yonder comes my Savior, in whom I love so well. He has the palm of victory and the keys of death and hell. Oh, Jesus is the rock in a weary
I bet they would have taken notes and hung on your every word. Jesus of Nazareth, I want to listen like that. I want to listen like tonight might be the last time we speak. I want to listen like everything could change tomorrow. I want to listen like my soul depends on it. So gracious God, clear away anything in me that might distract. Clear away anything in me that might hinder my my hearing and receiving of your word. I am listening. We are listening. saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Word of God, word of life. You can remain seated for the reading of the gospel. It's a little long of a reading tonight, so. But the Holy Gospel according to John, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. 
Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he had put on his robe and had returned to the table. He said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and I, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you. Before I begin, I just have to say, it's a little weird that I'm not looking into the camera on my phone only, but that I actually have eyes on me. So if I trip up on my words, it's because I'm not used to this many people looking at me. It'll, it'll work its way in and I'll be fine, but this is new again for all of us. And I also love hearing the noises of the papers rattling of little kids moving about, of the shuffling of feet. Because when it's me in here, it's just me. And it's eerily, it's weird and too quiet. So life has been brought back into this church, and for that I am ever so grateful. So again, thank you all for being here tonight. Feet. When I think of feet, I think of a few things. Right away, we are aware of our feet when they hurt. We notice the condition of our feet. We think of what kind of shoes that we're wearing on our feet. Or depending on what we're doing or where we're going, we think of what pair of shoes we should wear for that occasion. Some of us have a lot of shoes. Some of us have only just a couple pair. When we start to wear shoes as young children, we start out with like the cutest, tiniest little pair. Now I don't have any tiny little pair anymore, but I do have a pair of sandals. Look how cute and little these are. Aren't those so cute? Here, you can see. Just little. I know they're super cute when they're itty little bitty, but it's hard to imagine that we could get shoes that small on our tiny little feet. Then when we look at other places our feet go, we see the events of our lives unfold. I have this pair of shoes that I wore for our wedding. They were very uncomfortable. I have some of these boots that I wore in winter time to keep my feet warm. I have these shoes that I wear in the summertime when the sun comes out and it's nice. 
I have these pair of shoes that I wear for special occasions. I like to wear them tall boots like this, right? I have my comfortable shoes. I like slippers that I love to wear. I have the shoes that I wear most of the time. Everyone's got their like comfortable kind of tennis shoes they love to wear. And then I have a pair of shoes, you know, that we all can't get rid of because they're so worn in, but you almost can't wear them anymore because they're falling apart. I was gonna bring my husband's shoes, but then he probably would have noticed if he had to put them on and he weren't there. But you get the idea. By looking at all the different types of shoes we wear, it no we notice all the places that our feet have taken us. And it also reminds us when we need to break from our travels, when our feet get too tired to walk on, when we can't use our feet for one more step. And when our feet hurt, we notice. We notice when they're dirty or smelly, when they don't look like those perfect feet that we had when we were little. Those are the signs that we have seen many things and traveled to many places in our lives. That night in the upper room, Jesus got up from where he was reclining at the table, and he got down on his hands and knees and washed his disciples' feet. He kneeled at their feet, their tired, worn-out feet. Washing of feet was a significant act for Jesus to make in a service of his disciples. They were dirty and dusty, where the streets that people walked on, either barefoot or in these minimal sandals. And it was actually worse than just dirt and dust. The majority, uh, the major form of transportation was by foot or with an animal, a donkey or a camel. So you can probably imagine what might be on the feet of the people in those days. It was an extremely humbling experience for the disciples to have their feet washed by their teacher. Peter had the strong reaction. You no, you don't have to touch my feet. I don't need you don't need to wash my feet. It felt weird to him to have his teacher clean his feet. And it was more than he almost could take. Peter had seen along their long journey the marvelous things that was done by their teacher feeding the 5,000, healing blind men, raising a man from the dead, teaching in a synagogue. Those things that their Lord, those were all what their Lord should do. Peter felt that it was the disciples' responsibility to wash the feet of Jesus, not the other way around. If anyone was to kneel, it would be for the disciples to kneel and wash the feet of Jesus. As Jesus gently, steadily began to clean their feet, we can see that it is God who is the one who claimed each of these disciples and washed their feet, cleaned the feet of those who had journeyed alongside him to this point. As he washed their feet, he was serving them, but also cleaning them and renewing them for the journey that would continue without Jesus' physical presence. For Jesus was headed toward the cross. Yet Jesus wanted to make sure that they were ready to continue on. As he renews their feet for service, he models a posture of servanthood. He gives them a new commandment to love one another as God has loved us. I marvel in this passage and in this night in the upper room. I am constantly surprised by the enormity of God's love and grace for us. For in Jesus' act of washing the feet of those who have traveled and all that they may have encountered along in their daily lives, or even in our own daily lives, we too are washed clean by this humble servant who washes us clean in our own daily journey. Peter understands that Jesus is cleaning feet and much more and thinks that more is better. But Jesus reminds us of our baptism and the journey that we make with our God each day. That God is active in every moment along that journey. With whatever happens, 
from day to day, both in the joy and in the sorrow and in the pain and in the heartache. God never leaves us alone. And even more than never leaves us alone, God showers us with grace each day. In the washing of our feet, in the daily cleansing, and in the daily act of forgiveness. When we have traveled our lives from our baptism to the foot of the cross, we have traveled with our God, and we encounter our Lord this night in the upper room. We give thanks to God for the presence in our journey and wherever it may take us. Because in that journey, our relationship with God grows. May the sight of your shoes, whatever ones you may be wearing, whether worn out or fancy, new, small, old, comfortable, may it remind you of where you've been and where you are going, but also to be reminded that we're never alone on the path. May we be reminded this night of the presence of Jesus and the words that he teaches his disciples and in the meal they share together as we take that into our journey of these next three days. Amen. you to stand as you are able. Together, let us confess our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion 
communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. You may share a sign of social distance peace with those around you with a wave or, you know, a sign of peace. So we normally would be passing around the plates at this time, but since we are not able to do that, um, we do have an offering plate in the back of the um, sanctuary for you to drop an offering in on your way in, or when you leave tonight, if you wish to drop it in there, you can. So let us say our offering prayer together. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal, that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At this time, we are going to do uh, the words of institution and communion, because that is important in our service. Um, when I say the words, please know that the words are sufficient enough, but we will invite you as you leave the sanctuary after the service to take a bag of communion, bread, and grape juice with you to have either in your car or once you get home. So in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given to you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, and it's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together, let us pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ is given for you. And the blood of Christ is shed for you. And now know, may you know that the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthens you and keep, keeps you in God's grace always. Amen. Before I close with the benediction, you can be seated. Let's have you sit. We are going to close with a benediction and a blessing, and then following that is our stripping of the altar to prepare um, the altar for Good Friday. Um, we will be stripping the altar piece by piece, and the lights will slowly be going off at this point while Amy sings for us. Know at the very end of the service, we will flip on the lights in the back, so you will be able to see on your way out of here. So I just don't want anybody to feel nervous like we have to walk in the dark. <laughs> but then the ushers will also guide you out um, after um, the stripping of the altar takes place. So, may you receive this blessing. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Go in peace then loving one another and loving the world that God